These past several days have given me pause to stop and to think, to reflect, and in some sense to review. These last several days have been days filled with lots of emotion. Not only have I dealt with my own emotions, but many people, many of you, have come to me throughout the last several days to express your own emotions, particularly some frustration and particularly some fear. What I had originally planned to do for Mass today, I put aside because I think it's very important that today we take a look at who we are. In the course of these last several days, there have been some images come into my mind out of my studies, both undergraduate and graduate studies in theology. Images like the church glorified, the church militant, and the pilgrim people of God. And I'd like to look at those three images that I just mentioned and to see how we, as the people of St. Paul's Parish, how we as Christians and Catholics fit into those images today, given all that has happened and all that's being stated and all that's being pushed down and cast aside. So how are we, the church, glorified? And if you take a simple look around, I think the answer to that question can be seen in the beauty around us. The beauty of the architecture of this church, the beauty of its furnishings, particularly our stained glass windows, in the people with whom we are seated at the moment. Because each and every one of us is surrounded by clean, relatively happy, and certainly holy people. And our children are here with us today. What a wonderful opportunity to hug them close, to hold on to them, and to let them know how much they are loved. The church glorified. All of us here today celebrating Eucharist in word and in song, surrounded by the angels and saints of heaven, We truly are the universal church that God called into existence and sustains and keeps calling forward into the glory of the kingdom. And in fact, as we sit here to celebrate Eucharist, we are already at the right hand of God with Jesus, our King, our Savior, giving glory and praise to the Almighty Father of the universe. We are the church glorified. So how are we the church militant? Again, it's very simple. Just simply look around. And beside, inside every clean, happy face, there is a mind and a heart and a soul that is longing for something more reaching out to do and be someone better. Inside each and every family, there are issues that must be dealt with. Inside every family, there are fears and hopes and dreams and desperation. And all of that is brought here to be raised up and glorified and made our holy gift to God. But look even farther afield, and we can see the church militant 
in Syria, struggling for life. In Paris and throughout the world, mourning the dead and mourning the loss of freedom. Look into the dark corners of the world where the church exists and continues to minister in spite of totalitarian regimes that would make each and every person simply a machine, a slave to the system. Look into the world where the dignity of the human person is cast aside and people become slaves to someone else, to an ideology, to an industry, to being traded like pawns in a game. The church militant is all over the world proclaiming the freedom of the gospel, people dying as they proclaim that message. Churches are burnt to the ground, not only in Syria, but all over the world. And the church militant right here in the United States of America, as she continues to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and is not heard by our legislators, many of whom are Catholic and who in fact spread anger and fear and divisiveness instead of opening their arms to embrace the poor, the weak, the homeless, the refugee. We are the church militant, crying to the heavens, that there be peace, that there be freedom, that God be glorified, that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ have meaning and not be in vain. So how are we the pilgrim people of God? On a day-to-day -day basis, we continue the journey. We walk together. We pray together. Together, we come here to hear the Word of God, to let that Word have its effect on us and on our relationships and on our responsibility as citizens. Together, we come here to be fed, recognizing that it is Jesus Christ, Lord and King, who sustains us in our journey, who gives us strength through the gift of His crucified and resurrected body, who pours into us His holy and consecrated blood, that we might be fortified, strong in our faith and in our convictions, and giving ourselves as gift 
as offering to one another that the whole world might be fortified with that same strength and with our faith. When I think of the pilgrim people of God, the images that come to mind are the Israelites having left Egypt under the direction of Moses, spending the next 40 years wandering through the desert, knowing themselves better, worshiping God and praying and hoping and believing that He would get them all the way to the promised land. When I think of the pilgrim people of God, I think of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph leaving Bethlehem so soon after Jesus' birth and making that journey all the way back to Egypt so that they could escape the fear and the wrath of Herod. Truly a pilgrimage of life. When I think of the pilgrim people of God, my favorite image is the disciples in that boat on the Sea of Galilee being tossed around like toys. The storm violent and furious. And Jesus walking to them across the water and saying ever so calmly, do not be afraid. It is I. I'm here. And in these days, in all of the confusion, in all of the frustration, and in all of the fear, each and every one of us, Jesus is speaking to us now, as he has been throughout these past few days and as he will for days and days to come. Do not be afraid. I am here. And how do we know that? How can we sense that? Look around you. Because inside every clean, happy, holy face is the image of Jesus himself. He's here. He's holding on to us. He's protecting us. He's guiding us through the storm, just as he did the disciples. He calmed that storm. And then he sat down in the boat and he calmed the storms that were raging in their hearts and in their minds. He then went on to teach his disciples, as he teaches us, that the only true answer to radicalism is radicalism. It seems so easy. What the Lord is calling us to today is to respond to radicalism in the world right here in the United States. 
with radical love, radical mercy, radical respect for each and every person. God's creation given to the world as a gift. Pope Francis, in speaking to the Italian bishops in a meeting in Florence, said recently, I would like a church that is unsettled, always closer to the abandoned, the forgotten, the imperfect. I desire a happy church with the face of a mother who understands accompanies caresses. He's the vicar of Christ, chosen by the Holy Spirit to teach us, to guide us, to lead us. He gives us example of opening our arms and welcoming in everybody, not only to the church, but into our lives, into our home, into our Lord. Earlier this week, there was a news clip that was absolutely phenomenal. Many of you saw it. We have it today. A Parisian father calming the fears of his little son, letting him know that we are protected. I understand why these people have done that. Yes, because they are very, very, very méchants. The méchants are not very nice, the méchants. Les méchants Et il faut faire vraiment attention parce qu'il faut, il faut changer de maison. Mais non, t'inquiète pas. On n'a pas besoin de changer de maison. C'est la France, notre maison. Mais il y a des méchants, papa. Oui, mais il y a des méchants partout. Il y a des méchants partout. Ils ont les pistolets, ils peuvent nous tirer dessus parce qu'ils sont très très méchants, papa. C'est pas grave, ils ont des pistolets, nous on a des fleurs. Bah les fleurs, ça fait rien, c'est pour, c'est pour, c'est pour... Euh... Si, regarde, tu vois, tout le monde pose des fleurs. Oui. C'est pour combattre les pistolets. C'est pour, c'est pour protéger. Voilà. Et les bougies aussi. C'est pour ne pas oublier les gens qui, se, qui sont partis. Hein. C'est pour nous protéger les fleurs et les bougies. Ça va mieux du coup Oui, ça va mieux. I can't say this in French. We have flowers. We have candles. We are protected. My brothers and sisters in the RCIA,